is Your Life, a program for all America. Brought to you by new Liquid Prell, the shampoo that's extra rich to leave your hair looking radiantly alive. And Crest Toothpaste with Floristan. And now here he is, Mr. This is Your Life self, Ralph Edwards. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much. Right now, we're outside our NBC studio, about to meet our principal subject. And here is our fellow conspirator, uh, who has brought him to our NBC studio tonight. Old Mr. 98 himself, Michigan's great all-time, uh, all-American halfback and present sports director of the Columbia Pacific Network, Tommy Harmon. Tom Harmon, good evening, Tom. Thank you, Ralph. It's wonderful to be here. We uh, told Ted that we're going to take him out to dinner. Oh, that's how we, you, you told our principal subject. You're going to get him here tonight. Yeah. Well, okay. Now, uh, we're all set to go. Uh, your beautiful wife, motion picture star Elise Knox, accompanying you, right? Right. Elise has him trapped out of the car. Go out and start getting him out of the car. And let's go over and meet our principal subject. Stick around, ladies and gentlemen. This could be our greatest. Let's go out and see. la di da di da Hello, Elise. How are you? Who's the old pal here? Ted Using. Hey, Ralph. Hey, Ted boy. Uh, the last time I saw you was the 21. <laughs> That's right. Pal. How are you, Ralph? Good, Ted. Gee, it's good seeing you. Well, it's wonderful seeing you. I've been listening a little bit to the radio, and I hear you plugging a fellow named Bob Barker. Bob Barker on Truth of Consequence. Yeah, he's doing a swell job. Hello, Elise. Hello, How Ralph. are you? Hello, Ralph. How are you? You know something? I see you've met. We've met. <laughs> Indeed, we have. Ted, with this book here, yes, sir. this is kind of a, a landmark of mine, a kind of a symbol, and I don't know, I'm sure that you must have kind of a sneaking hunch by now. Before I was taken uh, someplace I, uh, to be operated on, yeah. I used to see this book in your hand on a show called... Uh, what could it be? Well, let me tell you something, well, it boy. Truth the con. <laughs> Ted, you're going to say a lot of it tonight. Uh -huh. Because this was our way of getting you here so that tonight we could say Ted Husing, who the athletes themselves call the greatest sportscaster of all time, this is your life. <laughs> the whole audience in there waiting for Oh, Ralph. We want to thank Tom Harmon here. How about this, Tommy? Don't ever believe him again, will you, Ted? I promise you I never will. <laughs> oh. Thank you very much, me. Tom Harmon. And it, uh, Ralph, I just wanted to say it couldn't happen to a more wonderful guy. Anybody in the sports casting business, he's the greatest. Absolutely. He's taught all you fellas a whole lot, hasn't he? Has. And I kept a secret, didn't I? You did it very well. <laughs> Pretty good for a woman, too, isn't it? Wait a minute, you can't say that about Elise. <laughs> and a great career, Tommy, yours has been. And thank you uh, to your lovely wife, Elise. Now, Ted Husing, will you please accompany me to our studio where we'll reconstruct the life story of a man who has become an idol and a legend. We will return to our story in just a moment. But first, here's a message from Prell. That looks like someone's getting ready for the masquerade ball. But she won't be a mystery very long. Not when they see her radiantly alive looking hair, always so sweetly fresh, so easily manageable. It gives her away as the girl who uses liquid, the shampoo that's extra rich. She's discovered what a radiant difference this extra rich shampoo makes, and you can too. Why? As soon as you uncap a bottle of liquid Prell, you'll see how gloriously different it is from thin, watery, and wasteful shampoos or thick, sticky ones that can actually dull your hair. Extra rich liquid Prell is just right. Every emerald green bursts into an extra rich, luxurious lather. That's why liquid Prell leaves your hair looking radiantly alive. So don't mask your lovely hair. Let the world see how radiantly alive it can really be. Tomorrow, start to shampoo with extra rich liquid Prell. And now here they are, Ralph Edwards and tonight's honored guest, Mr. Sportscaster himself, Ted Husing. <laughs> Ted, come on over to our press chair of honor. Uh, it's in a sportscasting booth. Similar to those which were your second home for more than two decades, here waiting for you are three people very close to you. Your mother, Bertha, uh, Mrs. Henry Husing, your daughter, Peggy, now Mrs. David Lacey. How about that Peggy girl and all those secrets? And your physician, Dr. Raymond Spritzler. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. 
This is a surprise. Ted, I know this is going to be a wonderful night, and I know you're going to get a great deal of lift from it for a long, long time. Well, do me a favor and have a private chat with me later so that I can tell you the kind of pill that I think might revive me. <laughs> Mommy, how do you feel about this book? Wonderful. Ed, I'm very proud of my boy tonight. I, I said, you honor your soul. Thank I you, Mommy. I am too, Dad. I think proud. it's wonderful. You <laughs> wonderful. As you know, Ted, oh, uh, I'll get, I'll get into <laughs> because of his schooling in the East, your son Duke can't be with you well. tonight, but he sends his love right out there. Now, you come on. Thank you, uh, Dr. Raymond Spritzler, mother, Mrs. Henry Husing. Thank you, my dear, and daughter, Peggy Lacey. Uh, Ted, sit here, Ted. Uh, uh, we'll enjoy the evening together. Got a happy, happy <laughs> way to go. Wow. Ready? I'm ready, sir. This is your life, Ted Husing. March 1956, just a year ago, you undergo two serious operations, Ted, that successfully remove a non-malignant brain tumor. However, your sight is affected. At your mother's home in Pasadena, California, with the tender care of your mother and your daughter, you begin the long battle to regain your health, fighting with the courage of those champions whose feats you've so magnificently described over the air. Through your friends, including a group of pals called the Skeeters, looking in back there. <laughs> They, uh, they rally to you. There are natural moments of depression and loneliness in which you feel yourself a forgotten man. As if anyone could forget this man and this voice. Good afternoon, everyone everywhere. This is Ted Husing speaking from Franklin Field, Philadelphia, there Pennsylvania. You remember that, Franklin. don't you? That familiar, vibrant voice was just a thin wail on November 27, 1901. Uh, where were you born? <laughs> where were you born, Ted? In New York City. Yes. In the Bronx. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you are christened Edward Britt Husing. As a little boy, you acquire a tremendous interest in sports. And who was the first one to nurture that interest in sports? Well, uh, if you must be truthful about it, my father. You've always claimed that he knew was more <laughs> about sports than I did. <laughs> he has since passed on. That's you true. also at this time read only, including your favorite book, The Dictionary. And you acquire a habit that I understand even to this day. Uh, when you come across uh, an unfamiliar word, what do you do? I memorize the word, but uh, I... Uh Call my daughter now. <laughs> yes. And you, have her look it up for me. And you used to write it down five times, I think. I used like to it. write it down three times. Three times. This helps to develop your vast vocabulary. That's which, right. Which has been a trade. You attend New York Stuyvesant High School briefly. Uh, you next attend Commerce High School. Right, sir. You leave both schools. Yes, sir. <laughs> By request, I think. I'm not sure. You Unfortunately, I'm <laughs> sorry to say that you must have questioned what I did back east. <laughs> <laughs> Ted, it takes years before you're to learn self-discipline. Right. You take various odd jobs, and when you're 18, you play uh, semi-pro football on True. weekends in New York City's famous Central Park. Our team was called the Prescotts. And Ted, you were our star center and a very gabby one, too. Yes, Ted, now entering your sportscasting booth, which they shared with you for so many years, two of your ex-teammates and real pals, flown what? here from Philadelphia first, radio and television sports producer for NWR, Les Qualey, uh, here's Les, right here. Oh, <laughs> <God>. How are you? <laughs> and from New York City, where he's executive producer of sports for CBS Radio, Jimmy Dolan, your old pal. Jimmy Dolan. Oh, yeah. I said I wouldn't kiss you, but I didn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, here we got the three of them together again. Oh, this could go for two hours with these right. fellas here. What All about? Irishmen. <laughs> 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 <laughs>